Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and we all know that we could overclock the Raspberry Pi, which is overclocking the arm frequency or the core frequency, but did you know you could actually overclock the SD card? So in this raw video, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get started. To start off, we're gonna do our preliminary test. Now, somebody wrote this software because there's really no real way to test an SD card, but somebody did write a software that you could compare all the numbers together. So we're gonna be using that as a benchmark. I'm gonna leave a link in the description on how to get like basically all the codes. So it's curl to this command. I might actually change it up and download the uh, script and host it on GitHub. So this might change. Now, this is on default SD card speed. And I'll show you where to do the settings and change everything you need to to speed it up. All right, now that the results are in, we have our read and write speed and the HD uh, parameter speed. So I'm just gonna copy this and open up like a Microsoft Excel or something like that, just to copy that um, the results down. Okay, and does that have everything? Yes, okay, I'm just gonna hit save. All right, let's close that out and I'm gonna show you how to set this up. So you gotta navigate over to sudo nano boot config.txt. All right, so we have this called DT overlay, SD host overclock equals 83, which is 83 megahertz. You could probably bump it up to 100. I'm just on the safe side, which is 83. When you're done editing that, save, reboot. And let's give that command a try. I'm gonna make the screen a little bit bigger. All right, and the results are in. So let's compare what we got from before and now. And you could see that it actually does a little bit of an improvement as far as the read and write speed. Default settings is at 11.89 write while the overclocked version is 13.64. So it's actually, you're getting more read and write just from adding these parameters in there. So um, definitely try it out. Uh, again, it's possible that you might lose some data if you accidentally go too high or something like that. So I started off slowly incrementing from 50 to 60, then 80, then you know all the way up to 100, then it would crash on me at 100. I didn't lose data at that point, but it crashed on me at 100, then I started going back down, and I found the safest point to be around like 83 for me. Other SD cards I was playing around with, I was able to get 90, so it really depends. Hey guys, it's me from the future. Uh, something happened with my editing and I lost some clips. Basically, it's the outro. So if you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, hit it in the comments below. And since I got you guys in the future, I might as well show you what I'm working on. Now, I did get... Mac OS 9 to work on the Raspberry Pi and uh, that video is going to be coming out soon once I get all the bugs fixed out but it took me for a while just to figure out how to compile everything and get the memory buffers you know, all that stuff anyway now if you want to watch my previous video hit the link to the right if you want to watch what YouTube tells you hit the link to the left and hit that little circle button in the middle to subscribe to this channel and as I say my nerd cave hack till it hurts